I'm out here on Fanning Island, walking on water from one island to the next. And this, my friends, is fucking paradise. I can promise you that. This is it. This is, it's here. And uh, I, I, I've fallen in love with Fanning Island. I'm gonna try to establish my residency here before those doors close and be one of the few nematongs who actually, you know, has residency on the island aside from Bruno and Chuck, which would be awesome. So Chuck found this beautiful little maniaba that I'm heading to now. I got this little nice wind protected lagoon. And this little islet here, heading from one island to the next through bath water. This this water literally feels like bath water. It's the perfect temperature and I just want to friggin' roll in it. What do you reckon? I reckon I found paradise. I reckon we sure did. I reckon you did. Get out of here then. It's like a little atoll inside of a little atoll. Look at this the lagoon in the sandbar. This is a beautiful beach. Water goes all the way around. It's it's literally like bath water. You can come lay out here at nighttime and watch the stars and Hey fancy meeting you here. Yeah. I thought you were gonna choose the other island. I went to both man. We need to get out of here before we get caught by the tide. I agree. Let's get going. Dun 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 Splash! We're coming back. With a group of kayakers. That we are. And fresh water. That we are. Goodbye, beautiful island thing. We gotta get out of here before the tide goes down, which it is currently doing. So we're in a rush, a mad dash, or else we'll be fucked out here forever. God, this place is just so picturesque. 
everything around me is just mind-blowing look at this and the just the climate is perfect Right here. We gotta get out of this place. If that's the last thing we ever do. Boy, there's a better life. Woohoo! This is great. It's a lot of fun. Look at me, Mom. I'm on a boat. With the, all this sun, you know? Yeah. Beautiful lagoon. Yeah, beautiful. Well, we made it to Gaspar's boat. And, uh. It's, it's, a, it's a bit mess, but. That's okay. Would you mind if you gave us a grand tour? Yeah, man. Alrighty, let's do Come it. Come in. Hakatere. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. It's a Rapanui name. Ooh, -hoo. oh, there's baby. Baby, you coming aboard, Chuck? With a Hi, baby. Okay. Wonderful. We are going to put this door for my baby. I love this food. This is beautiful. Look at this view they have. Yeah. Got life figured out with the view. Quite being on a boat or a houseboat. Did you have lunch or something? We're all right. No? We don't want to take your food. No, we eat. But you have some tuna? Shh, shh, shh. No? I'd like, like a piece of your dried tuna. I I, I, I would love some, yeah. yeah. Yes? You yeah, try it? Sure. That would be wonderful. Heck yeah, okay. I'm hungry. Well, so we, I time. imagine you we had something there. That would be perfect. Cameron. Yeah? In that net, we are drying the yellowfin tuna we got. Oh, before. wow, look at that. Tuna jerky. In the way there, we went by that coast and look. This is where all the magic happens. Yes, there is a bit mess because yesterday we had a bad night with the mosquitoes. Yeah, that's okay. Everything was like, oh. No problem. Of Babies can do that too. I love sailboats. Look at this. I want to do this someday. Well, you have a whole life. I agree. Oh, I love the the coconuts and the. It's yeah, a great it's idea. good receipt here for this. Yeah. Did you make that bread? Yes, I prepared the, the, this uh, quick this morning and when we went there we put some fire and sh Ooh, just grill it. That's the way to do it, that looks delicious. Oil, oil. Oh my gosh. It's, it's a bit hard but in olive oil... Oh, it's fine. Wow. Thanks Gaspar for having us aboard. Thanks to you, I couldn't show you all, but um, even that is a mess, so That's you okay. can see. No worries. It's nothing special inside, just some... Um, it's just the way a sailboat should be. Yeah, awesome. with a baby on. The baby on board. <laughs> well, we've been given a luxurious welcoming with some beautiful grilled fish. This is the first deep fried fish I haven't had in a while. Yeah, this is wonderful. Thank you guys. Look at that. Teaches us that it eats about 500 grams a day. So while this hunt is impressive, it actually consumes very little. Wow. Our counting protocol revealed there were almost 700 of them in the past. Sharky, no? Sharky. And then after surf. 
Oh yeah. That means a point. Oh wow, that's a fancy dive housing. He's very good. This is Gaspar sailing around Cape Horn. <laughs> Look at the muscles. That's me! That is Emilia. That is Emilia. This is Emilia. And you guys met on this, this Yeah, uh, in this trip. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Espera, espera, espera. Asistida. That guy is very clever. He makes sound. He makes sound? sound uh, all the sound with the waves oh, and yeah. the water outside. Oh, that. that is some rough uh, How many times have you crossed over Cape Horn? Once? Three. Three times? Wow. One by myself, one with my dad, and the third one was with some locals. I can't wait to sail around the world someday. That's a dream of mine that will someday come true. Just like truckers over here. Green. You ready? We'll see you at 420. I didn't say you knew that. <laughs> Bye guys, thanks Bye for the guys. food. Bye, and the and the and the chai. That was wonderful. The surfing on Guam is crowded and it's technically dangerous and hard to surf and, and and you can get hurt there, really, really get hurt. I was trying to go to Nias, which is this fabulous world class right that back in those days it wasn't wasn't even known as Nias yet. Um, people are still scrambling to find out about it. It was these these kids I've been surfing with can you hear that rain? It was these kids that I had been surfing with, California kids. Um, and they had told me about this wave on Christmas. And so I decided I was going to go to Christmas Island. I took off for Carl, flying to Nauru, then to Carl. It's where I got to see my first atoll. I dart through the sea. The, the atolls are in a very special color. They just when you see one from a jet, it's just so so beautiful. I, I flew to Tarawa with, without having any idea as to where I was on a surf trip. I I uh, I got lucky. The the government hotel had some broken down local houses for five dollars a night that they let me stay in. I had met these oceanographers, and the, the oceanographers were here studying the counter-equatorial currents, which was the, the lead up to El Nino, La Nina. Their diver had gotten meningitis, and they were, they were trying to find another diver, and so I wound up getting a job because I was certified to be a diver with them. That was hot work. We were working inland, and Tarawa making cement weights and building uh, triangular cages out of metal that would hold that would hold several things. It would hold instruments that were all sealed up. It would hold weights, and then we had ones that we would put down in five to ten thousand feet of water. One day when I was in Tarawa. I was walking along the road, minding my own business. And you can see how, the, how people have their places on the road, little fences and things, little stores that come up to the road. And as I came to this one fence there, there's a big commotion going on. And there was this guy beating up a girl. He was hitting her with a two by two until it broke. And then he, because he had long, virgin girls have long hair. So since she had really long hair, he just wrapped his hands around the hair. He was kicking her. And I can't even remember you know why he was angry. He was 
he, in this culture, you can beat up women for anything. And it's more of, you know, a, a, a dominance over, over them. And uh, I, I think I, I mentioned that part of the story. I, I just went on instinctiveness and I hopped over the fence and yelling at him to stop. He didn't stop. And I jumped to grab him. And, and as I jumped, he ducked. And I wound up hanging on his back upside down with my legs around his head. And um, he, he fell over. He, may, he didn't hurt me. He may have kicked me or something. I don't remember. But the girl was running away at that point. And uh, everyone was screaming. Didn't know what was going on. But I got up and ran after the girl. And, uh, and within a few moments, he was chasing us on a motorbike. And we are running across the bush and around Taro, Taro uh, patches. Not unlike here. There was a a 16 and you know, a minivan that has has plenty of seats in a minibus and um, we got on the bus he stopped the bus I thought he was gonna kill me but he just wanted to get her and and you know, he reached right over my head and was just pulling it right over right over me from behind me when the police came it was funny where once we started going again the girl was crying and, and the women were just howling, just howling with laughter, you know. They, they experienced the guy, you know, kidnapping the, the girl, you know. The, the real, that's how you get married, you kidnap, you elope. And um, went down and, and stayed with the bad man's brother, because you're related to everyone, down in Basho. We decided we were going to go from there to her island, Muckin, where we'd ask the parents to get married. When we went we went together up to, to Makin and and that was a whole nother set of real crazy things and, and I'm skipping over all the details but we can get to a real juicy part. So so we still hadn't slept together yet. And and we came ashore at night on this island over a reef over a over a reef with surf on it. So we came in sideways. And we realized the waves were too big where the boat couldn't go back out. So now we're, you know, we're ashore and we're not going anywhere. And pretty soon I'm, it's just no moon, darker than dark. And, and I'm, I'm following the girl in front of me. I, I basically have to just keep touching her back. It's just so dark. And, and we came to where there were, there were some huts and we were given a house to stay in for that night with, you know, with a bed and pillow and, and, um, and we enjoyed ourselves immensely. Well, the next morning, there was all this yelling going on because she was out rinsing the blood out of the sheet or spots of blood. You know, he was worried, or you know, that he had given permission for the girl to to be married or lose her virginity when he wasn't the dad. So, but eventually that died down, and later that day we went in, in sailing canoes. We we sailed out into the ocean and sailed four miles down to this little islet on a reef with no lagoon. It, the reef is uh, it's a few hundred yards wide, and, and sometimes kids get washed it, washed off it. Surf will be really big, and it just washes from one end of the reef to, to the ocean on the other side. And um, met her parents, you know, pr proposed to Mary, and um, we uh, had a simple, simple little celebration, nothing formal. That, that was the day of that picture. And, and staying there was like crazy, mental, beautiful. Just grassy places. It's, it's a, Makin is like this island. It's, it's nice and wet. We spent a couple of months up there. Immigration was, was not going to... They were asking if I could stay longer. The council got involved. Immigration said no. 
we had to make our way to Tarawa on the next ship. By now it was July. We had to experience independ the, the first independence. The, it wasn't the Queen, it was like Princess Anne and Prince Charles came, not the Queen. To, um, they were going to give us back our country. And there was a great big hoopla and stuff. During those weeks that went on, you know, I, I had heard on the radio that they were taking, people could apply if you were here. You could apply for citizenship. I tried back then because I knew this was a place I wanted to live. It, communication got worse and worse and finally I said, okay, I'll go to, um, I'll go to Fiji to work out your visa. And, and Toka was to wait in Tarawa while I went to Fiji. So I, I flew from Tarawa to Nauru to, to Fiji. And in Fiji, my bubble was broken. They said, yes, you can get a fiancé's visa, but it takes six to nine months and you can't apply for it from here. You have to go to the U.S. and apply for it in person from the U.S. To make a long story short, I wound up in Tarawa. The immigration wasn't going to give me any more time to stay. My wife was there in a funky handmade blue dress, hand sewn blue dress. And she got on and left Kitibis with me. And from there we went to Nauru, met all her relatives there. And it was funny, you'd go, we'd, we'd go to different families and they'd want my clothes, her clothes. And, and they had developed this little temporary custom where whatever clothes you arrive on, you're going to leave and they're going to buy you new clothes. I wound up with <laughs> synthetic orange underwear and shorts and shirts that were way too sticky because they weren't cotton. Um, surfing my guts out, we spent some time there. We spent another week on Fiji looking for surf over there. It wasn't a surf destination yet. Um, and then, and then we, uh, we got things all settled and we flew to Hawaii. It was absolutely you know, bliss and happiness. A girl who was just so innocent as to the world. We, w we went into the Alamana Mall. There's a Sears in there. Sears was a big thing in the 70s. And you know, they got multiple TVs and they're, they're playing, you know, different movies. And, um, and she's looking at the backs of the TVs. She wanted to know where the, where the picture was coming from. Because if, if there could be a picture there of, of Godzilla eating Japan or the giant ants, it had to be real. And, and she was reasonably articulate. She, she, quit, she blossomed right from the beginning. She, you know, she became the center of attention of my friends and, and just opened up. Just opened up. She wasn't quiet. She was outgoing and very pleasant.